Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at the new update to voiceover recording in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, I'm not really sure when Adobe changed this, but one of the most annoying features used to be that if your playhead was somewhere else down the timeline, if you tried to record a voiceover, it jumped all the way back to the beginning, and instead you had to set it in an out point. Well, guess what? That doesn't happen anymore. I'll show you that, and I'll show you recording on multiple tracks in a second. Now you have to make sure that your audio is working on your computer. If you're using FaceTime or Skype or any of these kinds of programs and your microphone is working for them, it's gonna work for Premiere Pro, but you need to pick it. So I'll show you how to pick it, how to name the files that you're creating and where the files um, are located. This is important. I'll also show you after I set up, I'll plug in my Logitech webcam that has a microphone and I need to set that up. Now, I'm starting with a completely empty sequence just so you know that there's nothing pre-set up to this and even better I usually have my laptop set up on a, um, a Thunderbolt dock over on my desktop and I unplugged it and Premiere Pro when I came over here it actually said hey your audio changed would you like to uh, uh, go and change it in your preferences. And I said no, because I wanna show you what happens when nothing is selected, and then we'll walk you through all of the different steps. Okay, all right, here we go. I will show you in Windows 10 in the system settings, sound, and you pick your output device here, and you can see I'm monitoring my microphone. So on the Mac, it's not that much difference in the system preferences, you can pick your sound device. And once that's set up, you're good to go. Now let's look down here on the timeline and you'll see the default has three audio tracks and there's little microphones in here and they're grayed out. That means I can't record any audio. And this is a what really confuses people. Well, first of all, you need to set that up. Again, you need to pick the same setting that I just showed you in, um, in the preferences. So in the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on Mac, go to preferences, audio hardware. And you check the output device. You can see right now it's set on USB and it's not working. The USB settings is, um, well, it's USB 3 Thunderbolt dock that it's usually set up and it, it's, it's not working. So I'm gonna pick the default, which is just the headphones and speaker. So I'll pick that and then immediately you'll see the input now changes and now that works. Also down at the bottom, the output changes. So now I've got uh, the correct setup. I'll click OK and look at that. Our microphones are now white. If I click the microphone, I'll start to record. But there's uh, uh, two other settings, three things uh, that you need to set up. First of all, you're going to record an audio file every single time you click on that. Where is that audio file? It's all the way over in your documents. And if you don't know this, and let's say you move this project somewhere else and you forget to move your audio, all those voiceovers are all gone because they're in a different location. The good thing is you can set up where captured audio goes. So why not set it to the project? Um, so in the file menu, project settings, scratch disks. And the one you wanna set is this one, captured audio. You can see it's in the documents folder. Click in there, you can choose any location, but if you choose same as project and click okay, Premiere Pro will actually create a captured audio folder for you. So it's not just a whole bunch of, of files uh, loose inside your project folder. Now I always create a project folder and then I create my project in that folder. Don't just create projects on your desktop. I've got a great tutorial here. Where was that? Right over there. Uh, tutorial on the way to set up a project uh, correctly before you even start. So. Now that's where our files are gonna go. What are they gonna be called? Well, let's right click on uh, A1 and you see voice over record settings. A little dialog box comes up and that includes this meter. This meter is now metering my microphone and showing me I have a good level. It's not too loud. It's not clipping. If it, if it gets to the right and turns red, that means you're clipping and you'll hear that distortion. 
This is a nice way for you to not only check to see that your microphone is working, but what the level is, because you want a good, healthy level. Something around 60 to 70%. In, in my case, I'm anywhere around minus 18 to minus 12 dB. Now, up at the top, you can tell it what your file will be. I'm going to type VO for voice over. And again, down here, there's my source and input. What's important about the source and input here is, Remember I went into my preferences and I picked something other than the USB setting and I chose my uh, speakers and headphone. You can't do that in this setting. You have to do that in the preferences. And once you do that in the preferences, then you can pick here. So now I'm gonna plug in my webcam and let me just set it up so the audio is a little bit uh, better. So I'll plug this in. It's recognized by my computer it doesn't switch to it automatically. That's actually a smart thing. So if I click in here now, you won't see it. If I close this up and open this again, hopefully it's here. There it is. Okay, so source, I changed that. Now I'm set up to my webcam. So you have to plug in and, and uh, make that change. There's a good chance you have the same microphone set up all the time. So if you change this once, it's a sticky setting, it'll be set all the time, as long as you don't unplug it. Okay, so mine is called VO, and by default, the pre-roll and the post-roll are on. I'll show you what those are in a second. So the countdown sound cue, when you have the pre-roll on, you'll see the numbers three, two, one, or if you want to change that to five seconds, whatever it is, it'll count down and it does that silently. If you turn on the countdown sound cue, it's going to beep each one of those times. I'm going to leave that off. So I'll close that up. I'm going to move my playhead down on the timeline. And you'll notice the only thing I have in my project is my sequence. I'm going to click and you'll see the playhead will back up three seconds. So don't be alarmed if you've got pre-roll on, it actually will move back three seconds. So if you're three seconds away from the beginning, it's going to look like it's doing what the old thing did, go all the way back. So I'm over here, I'll click, it jumps back three seconds, it counts down, it's not recording. Now it's beginning to record on A1 using that microphone and there's my level right here. I can just click on that, see that's red. I can click on that and stop recording and it's gonna stop the, the playback. So there is my recording and if you look over on the left, that's where it is. If you right click in the project, you can choose Reveal Project in Explorer or the Finder if you're on the Mac. And you'll see there's that new folder that was created. I didn't make that folder. And if we open that up, that's the name of the project. If we open that up, there it is, VO. So I'm gonna leave that as VO and I'm just going to record another one. And I'm gonna record on another track over here just by clicking here. It goes back. Three, two, one, and now, and now I'm recording, I'm recording the, next the next track, track and it's gonna continue as long as I want. So now the two tracks aren't interfering with each other. I'm gonna hit the space bar and stop that. Again, over here, this one says audio two because this is a different track. Audio two is a different track. So if I wanted that named VO uh, two, I should have uh, renamed that down in here. I can rename it here, but it won't rename it in the uh, in the project. But if we go back to our, our project, we can see there's the two audio files and they're all in the same Premiere Pro project. So always make that, that project. Okay, let's go over to track three and I'll turn off pre-roll and post-roll. So you can actually turn on pre-roll and post-roll and have an in point. So if you hit the I key, then it will move back from that point uh, exactly in the timeline, or just move the playhead and turn that off. So I'm gonna turn all of that off. And you'll notice now, Let's we're gonna record on three. I'm gonna record right here. And you'll notice it will not count down. It'll record as soon as I hit the microphone. So now, so now it's recording, recording now right away. Recording and 
You won't see it until it's done, but it's going to start right around there. I'll hit the space bar, and there are my three tracks recorded right there. Each one separate, each one with uh, different names in the project bin, and with all the right settings. So now that I have these audio files recorded, they're like any other clips that you have in your project. You can cut them, move them. You can change the amount of uh, gain and make them sound better. This is just a, a quick um, recording. One last thing I want to show you is muting the timeline when you're playing back because I have my my um, speakers turned down. And if I turn them up, so now it's recording to one right, right now. I'm recording on the next track. track. And when I'm playing this back, I'm playing all of them back. And if you're recording and listening to the speakers at the same time, and you don't have headphones on or earbuds on, you're going to have noise or, or feedback. So you want to make sure that you're using headphones or in the back in the preferences, instead of audio hardware in the audio preferences, you can choose to mute input during timeline recording. Click OK. And oh, while I'm at it, I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn up my audio. I'm going to record right over top of, of A1. So I'm going to start recording right here. I'll start recording right here. Now I'll mute these guys. Oh, I should have muted those before I started. So let me try that again. So now I'm recording and this other track is playing. So so uh, A1 is not muted, but you'll notice that even when I'm, I'm talking and recording, I don't hear those speakers. So now I'll hit stop and then I'll go back and play. So, so now, now I'm, recording. I'm recording. So that one setting in the preferences will turn off your audio. Um, I probably should just mention latency. And if we go back into our audio hardware preferences, um, you'll see there's a latency setting and this is dependent upon the hardware that you're using. Uh, right now it's showing me what my input rate is. And if I go to my settings, these are the settings for a standard Windows audio input. If I have a, a, a separate audio interface, uh, then those settings would come up. Latency has to do with a buffer that needs to be filled. And this is ju just the way that, that real-time audio recording is done, that the buffer needs to be filled. And the smaller the buffer, the more CPU power you need. The larger the buffer, the less CPU power, but the bigger the lag. So if you've got a really slow computer, and, and those settings are all default and they're probably fine, but if you wanted to have the timing in your head so that you could hear your voice being recorded at the same time, um, there will be latency, that little bit of an echo uh, effect, and that might drive you crazy. Um, there's no way to get around that by the default settings in, in uh, a system. The way that you can get around that is in a professional recording device that has something called direct monitoring. And you have to get into you know, higher end devices that uh, plug in through USB or older ones through a uh, Firewire. And they have something called direct recording. And that's what I have in my music setup. So that when I'm, I'm singing, my voice is directly sounding with no echo at all. But, and that what that does is it records but it bypasses the buffer and takes the audio signal directly back to the headphones. So there is no um, uh, latency. But you know what, for most voiceover stuff, you're probably gonna be happy just muting that and, and uh, just watching the picture and uh, recording it, unless you have to hear the things that is going on, then you need headphones. So you might have to deal with, with latency that way. All right, so hopefully the simple stuff is, is great for most people and you don't need to get that detailed, but. I can't tell you how much I love that new feature that it doesn't go all the way back to the beginning of the timeline anymore. Now you just hit record wherever you are on the timeline and it begins to record. Thanks, Adobe. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you have found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and one on the front of the channel. We love our PayPal supporters. Thank you so much. 
Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to let you know about the new updates, even if I am a little bit late on getting them out.